So let's work in the uh, worst case scenario for lighting. It's the end of the day. The lighting's behind the mountains over here. The light is all on the other side of the river, but this was on my mind. And so I wanted to talk about this now. Um, let's talk about autofocus. You know, all this talk about the S5, the FX30, the A7S III, you know, all kinds of different camera brands, autofocus. Yo, let's talk about it. The thing about autofocus is that if you're making like a movie or a documentary, or if you're doing some kind of client work, I'm, I'm assuming if you're shooting a wedding or something like that, which I don't do, but I'm assuming if you're doing something that you must have correct, you're not using autofocus most of the time. There's no way, you can't do it. You have to use manual focus most of the time. Now, I'm gonna be adjusting as we go along here so you can see my face. Um, the thing about autofocus is that a lot of YouTubers, they don't tell you that when a guy like, say, Brandon Lee, for example, who is genius, genius man with a gimbal, when he runs around and he does all these amazing shots with a gimbal and he uses autofocus, you know, he gets, he'll get the shot that he wants, you know, partially because he's a genius, but also because you know, when you use autofocus in that kind of scenario where you go around and you're shooting, you know, say you're running through a city or a neighborhood or there's a lot of people or there's a lot of activity going on or if there's a lot of, you know, like beautiful trees in the background or mountains or whatever, you're going to shoot autofocus, but you're only going to keep the parts that are in focus. And a lot of it is going to be out of focus because I don't care what camera you're using, it's going to be hunting for stuff no matter what you use because a camera is not as smart as you. It doesn't really understand all the time what's going on or what you want or what is necessary in that moment. And so that's the beautiful thing about editing. You take out the stuff that doesn't work and hopefully you have enough where you can have a complete body of work, you know, a work of art. But for most of the stuff that you need, like if, you know, in my case, if you're doing a narrative film, you are using manual focus. Now I'm doing, I'm using autofocus right now um, because if you're just interested in doing like YouTube stuff or you know if you're just doing interviews or somebody's just staying in one place then yeah then maybe Sony is king or Canon is king because you know it doesn't really have to work that hard like you lock in on something you lock in the autofocus and it sits there or you know maybe it can even follow somebody for a while but again you know you try to follow anything via autofocus for a long enough time, it's going to lose the subject eventually. Um, and, you know, so I'm just saying, I chose the Panasonic S5 for my next camera. Sorry, it's getting dark. I chose the Panasonic S5 for my next camera. And it's because of the whole thing, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not just looking at autofocus. I mean, I am positive that it has great autofocus. I have watched every single review of the Panasonic S5, the GH6, the S1, the S1H, everything. And I have found, you know, like many people have found, many, many reviews that say that the autofocus on the S5 sucks or any of the Panasonic stuff. But I've also found a bunch of videos by some heavy duty filmmakers who say it's great, it works fine because it's about your expectations, it's about how you use it, it's about what you're looking for, you know? Um, you use it when you think that it's to your advantage to use it, but if you really need to get the shot, first of all, don't you want to be involved? Like, don't you want to be creative with your focus and maybe pull focus and have the audience be looking at one thing in the frame and then something else? And, you know, it's a creative choice. I mean, manual focus is an amazing thing, not to mention, you get to use all these, you know, these um, vintage lenses that have all this character and they're always manual. You know, they don't have autofocus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot a little scene of myself just washing dishes. Um, and this is the part of the video where um, I go, let's see what it looks like. Because it's just going to be me in my kitchen washing dishes from a bunch of different places. And I'm keep, keeping the camera on autofocus throughout. This is a Sony a6400. It's supposed to have mad good autofocus, like the best ever when it came out. And so it doesn't have the updated autofocus now to all the Sony cameras, but it's still awesome. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, it's, it hasn't lost my focus yet since I've been talking now. 
but I'm gonna shoot this scene of me washing dishes and then let's see what happens. Okay, now this is the part where I make believe that it just happened, but I'm not going to do it till I get home tonight. But how did that look? Like it lost focus in certain spots, right? Of course it did. And of course, you know, the shot that I did from my bedroom where I was looking through the door and you see me in the distance, my back, obviously I had to use manual focus because the camera is not going to figure that out. It's not going to go, oh, we're in the bedroom now. Like, let me just focus on that little crack in the middle of the screen. No, that's not going to happen. You have to use manual focus. And so, and manual focus is fun. It like makes you feel like you're in control of the situation. Like you are deciding what your image is gonna look like. You know, that's filmmaking, that's photography to me, that, that you're taking part in the process that, you know, you're not, I mean, you know, okay, it's cool to just have a, a point and shoot kind of camera. That's fine, you know? Um, that's fun because then you don't have to worry about anything but just, you know, getting the shot. But you know, for me personally, I like to be part of the process. I like the, you know, it's like driving a clutch, you know. I prefer to drive a clutch, even though I have an automatic now, but I've driven a clutch most of my life because I like to be a part of the process. I, I feel like I'm more kind of, you know, connected to my car, connected to my ride, connected to my journey, you know. So that's what autofocus is for me. It kind of takes me out of the equation a little bit. And sure, it's convenient. It's sometimes you know, makes it easier to, to do what you want to do. And, you know, as, you know, I saw one YouTuber once say, hey, manual focus is, you know, your manual focus is not as good as the camera's autofocus sometimes. And that's true. You know, sometimes I use autofocus to lock in and then I put it on manual focus because I don't want any pulsing. I don't want the camera to get confused at any point. So sometimes I'll lock it in and that works great. And the other thing is, you know, sometimes you know, you have a subject manually focused and if he or she moves around a little bit and like gets a little bit out of focus from time to time, it comes back in and out, that's like real life. You know, like your eyes are not mad focused all the time on everything, you know? Sometimes it looks natural for it to come in and out of focus and sometimes it looks cool to look in and out of focus coming in and out in a frame. It's very dramatic, it's very cinematic, you know, so I think it's, as long as you are doing everything with intention, right? When it comes to filmmaking, theater, photography, visual art, anything, as long as you are intending upon what you're doing, I think, you know, then use autofocus with the intention of getting as much as possible, knowing that you're gonna cut out the parts that don't look good, or maybe you're going for that look. You know, maybe you're going for the pulsing look. Maybe you're going for, you know, things going in and out. Um, in a weird kind of way, you know, in a way that you're not controlling. But, um, I mean, it's all good, you know what I mean? But for me personally, yo, I got the Panasonic S5. I spent $697. I got brand new camera. I got a 50 millimeter F1.8 Panasonic native lens, you know, an L-mount lens. I got a tripod. I got a backpack. I got an extra battery. I got a 128 gig SD card, all included in the package. So the whole thing with tax cost me 1800 bucks. I mean, if I bought a Sony a7S III, I'd be over 4000 almost $5,000 with that kind of package, you know? So no shade to Sony, I love Sony. I'm keeping my Sony a6400, 
but I'm really looking forward to getting the S5 in my hands and being creative with it, working in anamorphic mode, getting some anamorphic lenses, and just learning with everything that's in that camera, just packed in there, all the, you know, all the, you know, filmmaking goodies. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, and I also feel like no matter what camera you have these days, they're incredible, every single one. Like, if you can't do good work with whatever camera you have right now, you need to look at your own stuff. Like, I, I always look at myself like, you know what? This didn't look so good. I'm not blaming it on the camera. I'm blaming it on me. I could have done better, you know? So, sorry, I'm manually adjusting <laughs> constantly here. So, you could hear the train in the background. It's really beautiful out here. I'm up here in Milton, New York, which is upstate right across the bridge from Poughkeepsie, where I live now, New York City boy upstate. And um, so anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about today was my autofocus thing. Um, so, I th you know, somebody mentioned in the comments in my last video, like FX30, no, no doubt about it. And I'm like, the FX30 is, I am positive, an incredible camera, an amazing camera. But at the end of the day, when I made a list and I looked at everything that I needed and I wanted, and I was leaning towards the Sony because I've had a Sony this whole time. Um, the Panasonic, looking at the comparisons, inspired me. I felt like I could do better work. I felt like more excited about working with that camera. And the other thing is, if it doesn't work, I got 30 days to send it back, but I'm not gonna do that, you know. I'm committed to it. I'm gonna learn as much as I can. And I feel like the Panasonic S5 is a camera that I can grow with. I'm sure I could have grown with the FX30 as well. And I'm positive that I will probably use an FX30 at some point too. You wanna to see the train? Check this out. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, since you probably can't hear me now, I'm going to end with this. And I will see you on the next video. Peace.